What's going on YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to create, well, not really create, but how to integrate reporting into the framework that we have been building. Now, I already put out a video, and it's a pretty long video of how to build the reporting itself, like how to cre create the XML reports using Java. Uh, so we'll be using that implementation in this video. I'm not going to be showing you how to build the reports from scratch because I already have the video for that. So the link is going to be somewhere on the screen. But what I'll show you in this video is how to actually take that implementation and plug it in to our existing framework in order to generate XML reports as our tests are running. So at the end of each test cycle, uh, we'll have an XML file with all of the uh, test suits and test cases that have been executing during that time. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So first thing first is we need to import well, not really import, but create that reporter class. And I'm just going to copy paste it. Uh, to the core but the first first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the core and I'm gonna create a new class I'm gonna call this reporter and I'm just gonna go into the into the implementation of the reporter that I have here um, which is basically everything that we did in that video uh, that shows how to create XML reports with Java. And I'm just going to copy everything from here and I'm going to paste it right inside the reporter here. Now I will have uh, will have some errors. Uh, that's fine because we need to say that this belongs to package core and that should fix some of the uh, some of the errors. And it looks like it's also complaining about the API language. So let's double check like what language we're using here. I was going to build on the ground. So it looks like I'm using 1.5. Let's change that to 1.8. And we may have to actually oh Gradle is actually rebuilding it. Rebuilding the project on its own so it should be fine. Let's go back into reporter. It looks like it fixed it. Uh, it no longer complains about the API language or Java language uh, API so that's good uh, now the only thing we really need to do is just integrate this class in our flow and basically the first thing first is we're gonna go into a manager and well basically we need to find a place where it makes sense to call uh, this method right and I think the most obvious place is the test manager because test manager is inherent like is extended by every test suit that we have so if we put um, that update call in failed and succeeded methods here that would be the perfect place for it but we need to make sure that our XML location, like where we store XML, it can be dynamic. So it has to be kind of passed in to this method. And I think the best uh, solution to it is to just pass in the reporter object right to this method. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a private variable here so no one can overwrite this. And I'm gonna say reporter is null by default and then I'm going to create another method and this is going to be oops this is actually going to be public static void and I'm going to call it set reporter and it will take reporter as an argument basically it takes the object of the reporter itself and then we'll use that object to do the reporting from test manager itself 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to say test manager, or actually I think it's reporter equals, is it like that? No. Private, okay, no, actually this has to be static. Yeah, let's make it static. And then we can say test manager dot uh, test ma test manager dot reporter. I can't type. Okay, um, so test manager dot reporter equals reporter, which we pass in. So now we can go down here, and we can say okay. We're gonna say test manager reporter update. And then we're going to reference the information that we store inside our test info to get the suit test name and then whether the test passed or failed. And we know that depending on which method gets called, right? Because this is a failed method. So we know if we fall in here, then this is a fail. And then we're going to do the same thing here but in this case is going to be a pass so there we go <clears throat> as far as updates to the test manager go that's that's all that we need to do here now what we need to do is make sure we actually set the reporter mm, and actually I see one issue here let's um, let's evaluate whether the test manager um, is null. So if it's not null, then then we're gonna do this. As a matter of fact, so if someone forgot to set the uh, reporter, we we will just not report. We just there will be no XML reports. But if the reporter is, is set, then we'll try to generate the reports. Okay. Uh, now we need to make sure we use the set reporter to actually set the uh, set the object. So for me, I think that the most logical place to set the reporter is going to be from the runner. So when we initiate, when we call the runner, this is going to be the beginning of our test cycle. So here we can say string um, I'll just call it XML location equals XML and here we just say result underscore and I like to put some sort of ID uh, to go with the results. Uh, usually, usually you want to assign like a, wh whenever you start a test cycle, you want to assign like an ID to that test cycle so you can identify everything that happened. Uh, with the test, it belongs to test cycle X or test cycle Y. So, but because we don't actually have uh, any uh, test cycle ID that we get from anything, so we're going to use timestamp here. So I'm going to say new date. Let's import date. Get time. So we'll just you know, use a timestamp here. And then we're going to call test manager and set the reporter to new reporter. And then we need to pass in a file where we want to save it. And basically the file is going to be an XML location. And then this produces an exception. So we're going to add that to method signature. And we're done. So now whenever we run our tests, I don't actually have an Android device right now to run this on, but I did try this implementation with like dummy tests and it does work. Um, so now whenever we run our tests, it's going to automatically create um, XML reports in this location and actually the location is not finished I'm sorry um, so you guys can like store it wherever you want I'm gonna put it into the project directory here 
So I'm actually going to paste this in like this. This is the path to where I want to store this. Um, usually the path to where you're storing something should be dynamic. If it's like a project deer, then you, you should have a method that will return the project deer. It's a topic for another video. Um, but for, for the purposes of this video, this is fine. Uh, if you want to hard code it uh, to something like this, it's okay. Um, there's one more thing I want to mention. Uh, this reporter is not exactly the same as the reporter that I showed in the other video where I showed how to make it. This one is a little bit improved because we have this two lines here. Basically what that does is it's going to format the XML a little bit. It's, it's not the best formatting, but it's not too bad it's not as good as what you get from like online um, XML formatters but it will like do the indents and it will do the new lines and everything but it's it may be a little bit off on the uh, indents so I think that's it for this video guys if it helps you out make sure to like the video subscribe and share take care guys